The United States can no longer be considered the ruling state in the world. Part of that trap, of course, is the deliberate, pre-planned demolition of the US dollar. The deliberate, pre-planned, incremental demolition of the US economy. They're almost at the end of the road now. But I want to ask the question that is there a military trap as well? Maybe that's why Russia and China did not vote veto the first revolution re resolution on Libya. That there's a trap being set for the United States. And as they move in, they'll find themselves in a military situation where they're going to be facing embarrassing defeat because they're overextending themselves, overreaching. And then to save the United States, Israel will have to intervene. In the same way that to save Britain, the United States had to intervene. I leave you with these thoughts. What we've done tonight is to touch the subject of Syria from our long-term perspective. Iran is going to suffer serious consequences if their regime change in Syria. Iran will be isolated. The attack on Iran is pre-planned. I don't think it's because they want to simply destroy the nuclear plants in Iran. I think they have a more important perspective that they want regime change in Iran. They want a virulently Shia regime in Iran that will become more amenable to building a relationship with Israel. The attack on Pakistan is coming. And when the attack on Pakistan takes place, it will be for the purpose of destroying Pakistan's nuclear plants and dismantling Pakistan's nuclear weapons. Israel cannot launch a big wars when Muslims have a weapon that they can use effectively against Israel. It follows, therefore, that perhaps the first attack will be Pakistan. Given the support that the Pakistan government and the Pakistan armed forces, I don't know why Pakistan should be annoyed with me for this. This is facts. The Pakistan armed forces have betrayed Allah and his messenger monstrously. I'm talking not about the soldiers who love Islam. I'm talking about those who control strategic decision making. Don't come to me and tell me that all the soldiers in the Pakistan armed forces love Islam. I know that. I know that the Pakistani people love Islam. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who control decision making in the armed forces and in the government. They are the ones who betrayed Allah and his messenger. They are the ones who for the last 10 years, shamelessly, have allowed NATO transit to take all the oil supplies and all the military supplies from the port in Karachi, all through Pakistan to Afghanistan, to support the killing of our Muslim brothers and sisters and children in Afghanistan, thanks to the Pakistan Armed Forces and Pakistan government. And you're going to be annoyed with me for condemning that? Yes, there are many people in Pakistan and the armed forces who love Islam and who detest what has happened, but they're not in control. What we have done tonight, and the time, was, time is now up, is to look at this perspective from the, look at this subject from the perspective of Islamic eschatology. And when you do that, you see a pattern emerging. A pattern which is showing you Israel inching, moving forward, little by little, towards her eventual objective of launching her big wars. And then blaming Islam. Islam is now rising up, the Arab uprisings. Islam is emerging in Egypt because the elections coming. And the Islam that is rising up in the world today poses a threat to Israel. 
And we have to do something to save Israel and to save the world from Islam. And that's why we have to launch these big wars. Hmm? These events are coming. And it is time for the ulama to return to the Quran. It is time for the ulama to return to the Quran and to return to Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and return to ilmu akhiru zaman so that they can understand the reality of the world today and they can explain it to the ummah of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samil alim wa tub alayna ya mulana innaka anta tawab rahim barahmatika ya arhamu rahimin Ameen May we uh, have the question and answer now? Uh, the question is the demolition of the US dollar connected with some subject of three days. I know nothing about three days. No. What I do know is that Barack Obama is not there by chance. They put him there. They put a black man in the White House. <laughs> And they put the black man in the White House to take blame. <laughs> to be the guinea pig. To take the blame. Because they know what's coming. I guess they're probably waiting for... The US dollar is already finished. It's in ICU. They're keeping it alive. They're waiting for a war, probably. And then they blame the war for it. And the US dollar will then collapse, Wall Street will witness its collapse, and then they will demonetize the US dollar, meaning it's no longer recognized as legal tender. And because so many countries hold stacks of US dollars, you can't buy oil in the world without US dollars. That's unfair, really. So all those US dollars that you're holding will suddenly collapse. China is going to lose most of all. Saudi Arabia is going to be losing a lot. And then they will replace the US dollar with another currency which will have a fraction of the cost. So on every 90, every one dollar that you had, you're probably going to get five cents. White America is going to suffer massively. Black America is not rich. And when white America suffers this massive blow, the United States has a very curious law. In the United States, you're allowed to buy guns. Oh yeah. You can buy as many guns as you want, it's the law. So white America has lots of guns. So when the US dollar collapses, you're going to have fireworks in the United States. Fireworks, riots, killing, and they're preparing for it. But I don't know about the three days. Any more questions? Is this riot in the Arab world, I mean, actually uh, Moroccan, which also uh, had noticed some of the riots? And I want to, uh, to, to ask you whether these uh, riots in Morocco, Tunisia, Yemen, Bahrain, uh, all those countries actually, even in Jordan these days, are uh, pre planned uh, Zionist uh, tactic? Or is it, uh, I mean, like, uh, those uh, riots we have a good result of the Islam in the Muslim nation or we have uh, bad results? Okay. There, there, is a, there is an analogy. When the summer comes and there is no rain, then the land becomes parched and the grass becomes dry and brittle. And then you know that only one match is sufficient to start off a huge wildfire with thousands and thousands of acres burning and many, many houses being destroyed. Hmm? Only one little spot. So they know what they have done to the Arabs through riba. 
causing them to go 